Hey, welcome to Meh Miniature Painting. Today we're going to talk about dry brushing. <laughs> Jeez, that made a huge mess. All right, dry brushing is a fairly beginner technique, so there's quite a few videos about it out there. I'm happy you decided to watch this one. Now, dry brushing is hard on your brushes. So, you want to use an old one whenever possible. If you have it available, the best are these makeup brushes. You can go to a place like Walmart or look online and get the cheap makeup brush brushes, in this case, uh, ELF or ELF brand. Well, you know, I won't say cheap. How about inexpensive? I don't know how they perform as makeup brushes, but I've heard their cost is their main selling point <laughs> for makeup application. But we like to use them as dry brushes because of that nice fluffy tip. And there's lots of different kinds. So I have an eye crease brush, an eye liner brush that has a different shape, uh, a foundation brush that's quite a bit bigger. The most expensive one I think I bought for $3 American, uh, which is great. And when it's all junked up, you don't feel bad just kind of throwing it in the trash can. All right. So for how to dry brush. I took this base and I gave it the old baking soda and super glue method to give it texture and then I put some sepia ink on it to give it a nice earthy tone. I'm going to dry brush with some gray war colors. Uh, war colors has different temperatures of gray and I'm going to use the warm gray to keep that same kind of earthy tone and after that I'm going to use this really light gray, uh, wolf gray, I don't know where that name came from from Vallejo Game Air. This will also show how to dry brush with paints that have different consistencies. One that's thicker and one that is airbrush ready. Obviously you don't want to dry brush uh, using a wet palette. That's going to make your job much harder. So I'll use this dry palette here and you're just going to just dab it into the into the paint. Uh, just dab, 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 and then kind of get some of it off on the side. And here you can see, uh, see it on the brush. And then you're going to rub it onto the paper towel. And you want to rub, 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 rub until you can kind of see that there is some color on the paper towel. So most of it has come off. And then you're going to apply it onto the miniature. And you play the kid game of, oh, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, until you are just barely on the mini. And that way you can pick out all the ridges and all the textures, okay? Now the direction of dr brush travel can be important too. So this is the ground, basically. So I'm gonna go all over. But there are two different modes of thought, right? You can go perpendicular to the ridges, so that way it catches all of the raised edges or the brush can be more focused and go parallel to just the ridges you want to catch. Um, that way you can really focus in on particular places. And you can see the color lightens up a bit. Uh, it's hard to see on camera, but it's, it's pretty evident in real life. All right, in order to clean off, you can literally just keep dry brushing onto the paper towel until it's all gone. And that's it. Now for the airbrush ready paint, uh, it has a lot more moisture in it. So I'm going to apply it directly onto the paper towel, basically use the paper towel as my palette. Uh, and that will absorb most of the moisture. And then <clears throat> I'm going to put it onto the brush and uh, clean most of it off onto the paper towel the exact same way as I did out of the dry palette. As you apply more layers of dry brushing and you get kind of lighter and lighter, you'll want to rub more off onto the paper towel. So uh, you want the most dry brushing and then less and then less and then less as you layer it. And the effect should become more and more subtle. <clears throat> In this case, I'm going to apply to just the highest parts of the uh, ridges and you can see the color transition. And then with that, the simple uh, base is done. All right, 
right, so now you're done dry brushing for the day and you want to clean the brush. First off, always put your paint water in something other than a typical cup. If you put paint water in a coffee cup or something like that and then forget to clean it, someone in your house is going to get mad at you. I don't know who, but someone. Right? I have always used an old aluminum can. This helps for a second reason, because I have never, ever, ever even been close to drinking my paint water, which is great. So you can see the water and I'm going to put the brush in. These makeup brushes absorb quite a bit of moisture, so you don't want to actually completely dunk it. You can just put the brush into the shoulder or the knuckle uh, where it bends over and it will wick up a bunch of water. And then you put it on the paper towel and you just rub the hell out of it. And you keep doing that until the paper towel rubbings are clean and then you just leave the brush to dry. Alright, so here's the dry brushing technique, but it's going to be on something that's differently shaped and give a different effect. I have an Imperial Knight bottom and just the legs on this guy. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to say I know the prep on this model is not good. I got this guy off eBay and the plastic was all messed up. Uh, like, it's brittle and it will actually just break in your hand, which is pretty unusual for GW. Uh, so I'm not sure what happened to him, but I've accepted his flaws. Uh, I will take him the way he is. I've puttied, sanded, and worked with it, but I've called him done, and I love him as he is. So I primed him black, airbrushed with Vallejo Metal Color Magnesium to get that dark metal color as a base, and I'm going to use Vallejo Metal Color Dark Aluminum for the highlight. So here's this big round hip joint, and it's going to be shiny and I'm gonna make it brighter than the magnesium. I probably wouldn't use dark aluminum normally. I'd just use like steel, but in this case, I'm gonna want, want it to go pretty shiny. I'm gonna use the bigger makeup brush and I'm going to get the paint on it the same way, dab it up and then rub on a paper towel. And go ahead and rub while you daydream for a few minutes. It's gonna take a little while. Cue up another show. Okay, so you're still going to dry brush effectively the same. The same dry brushing technique of just barely touching it and just getting it on there. And in this case, I want the whole thing to be shiny, so I'm going to go all the way around the hip joint. And I'm just gonna do the one side so that way you can see a before and after. Yeah, and the difference between the two looks looks pretty good, in my opinion. And you're going to clean that brush the exact same way that we talked about before. Okay, that's pretty much it. Why dry brushing is and how to use it. This is another one that I just kind of threw together using some metallics. I thought it looked, I don't know, kind of cool. So if you enjoyed this and you want to see more of my work, give this video a like. Maybe subscribe and comment if you want to. You can see what I'm working on by checking out my social media. Links are available via link tree down in the description of the video. Thanks and I'll see you next time.